welcome. We'll we'll get cracking on this um, quick little kind of extra bite size workshop as part of Learning at Work Week. And uh, kind of the, the theme, the national theme for um, Learning at Work Week is around kind of being future focused. And, and for me, a big part of that is is kind of understanding our habits. So um, I am recording this, so we're recording this so you people who can't make it can, can get on and listen to it uh, later on. And uh, a fair bit of it is going to be kind of me talking to you, showing you some slides, getting you to think about it. There's occasional bits I'll, I might get you to kind of share some of your thoughts, in which case, just because of the numbers, it's probably easier just sticking it straight into the chat rather than out loud, just so we're not getting people talking over the top of each other. So about creating new habits. It's it's um, one of those interesting things. And uh, Will Durant, who's a philosopher going back some time, um, to, is kind of famously quoted is, uh, his quote as we are what we repeatedly do and you know, in essence that's what habits are they're something that we've repeated over and over again until it becomes um, so normal we don't even think about it and we are massive creatures of habit so what I want you to uh, just think about and if any of you want to again share what share them in the chat feel free what new habit or habits would you like what would you want? Just a few people share that share a few in the uh, in the chat. Let's get a bit of an idea what habits you'd like. That journaling, nice, Jez. Absolutely. Uh, going to bed early. Excellent. I'm liking that one. Well. Otherwise, you won't be listening to it, Jez. Uh, meditation, excellent one, good one. Reading, actually using my bike. I'm assuming there, Karen, that you have one. It's the actual bit that's giving that away. Tidings I go and not creating more con more mess constantly yet. Uh, so more reading, that's good. I am loving these. So keep these in mind as we're going forwards. So a nice big number there, 40%. More daily exercise, Mark, I'm liking it. So 40%, what do you think 40% has to do with our habits? Can you chuck your answers in the chat? What do you think 40% has to do with our habits? Planning, interesting, James. Oh, he's planning what you want to start doing. So 40% people don't do them. Okay, thanks, Jess. Any other thoughts? Uh, Five percent of people stick to new habits. Interesting, Isabel. Five percent are bad ones. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> it depends on the individual, I think, for that one. Okay, that could be, could be different. Basically, forty percent, um, kind of on average, but it's the low average. I was checking out some new research uh, literally yesterday in in prep for this, and they're now saying forty to fifty percent. But 40% of our daily activities are habits. So on average, 40% of what we do day to day is a habit. We do it without thinking about it. So, you know, getting changed in the morning, getting dressed in the morning, putting your coat on. You think about it. If you've got, you, if we had time, I'd tell you to go and get a cardigan or a coat and go and put it on. If you do that, I'll guarantee you didn't have to take a moment and stop and think, right, which arm do I put in first? You just do it by habit. Next time you do that, put you put your jacket on, put your coat on, pay attention to which arm you put in first, and then take it off and try it again, and it'll feel really unusual. Okay, and that that's what habits are. The, the difficulty with habits is <laughs> particularly those ones either that we'd like and don't seem to do, or those ones that we don't want but can't seem to leave behind. And I kind of said before, you know, habits are behaviours that we perform automatically. So as I said, brushing your teeth. Um, the order that you do things, you probably get up and get changed and dressed in the same order. <coughs> Hopefully pants go on before trousers. I'm just throwing that out there. Maybe not for some, but, you know, um, but, you know, we, we do things, you know, even the route you take if you drive to work or driving somewhere you go regularly, that route you will tend to do by habit. And for those that do drive, I'm sure at some point you've probably got home and don't remember going through those last sets of traffic lights because part of that you're on autopilot. And there are kind of three categories of habits. 
So the first one, I kind of had those habits we just don't notice. So most of you are sat down. You may have done this before. So just um, um, kind of um, work with me here. I just want you to, if you haven't already, just fold your arms. I can see a few people just folding your arms. So pay attention to which arm is on the top and how your hands are tuck, either tucked in or on top. Now do it the other way around. So change your arm so the other arm is on top. That will probably most likely for many of you feel really uncomfortable. There may be some of you, your arms are spinning like this because you're trying to work out how to do it. You, in essence, that's a habit. It's one of those automatic habits that we have. So we also have habits that are obviously good for us, but we fi maybe find hard to either get going or we put a lot of effort in. So, for example, exercising. So going back to, I think it was Mark, you were saying about exercising more. <laughs> Just you don't like it. So you, I, I give you permission to fold your arms back the normal way. Please do. And Mark can't do it. There you go. It can take a bit. It's a power of habits. And lastly, it's those habits that are bad for us, which we didn't do, but we just can't seem to stop. Maybe we've even tried and we can't quite get there. So start thinking about some of this stuff. And the example there was maybe maybe drinking a little bit too much. So I'm going to give you um, some steps, so kind of some, some steps to think about. And it's not that you have to do what, things in each turn. You may want to try one of them and actually that makes the difference. But before I get into that little set, you've got to, one of the big things about habits is finding the right cue. OK, so generally a habit happens when something causes it to happen. So the example with the 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 photo here, your habit is the cue ball um, that doesn't go anywhere until you hit it with the stick. So hit it with the cue and that that's where we need to be thinking about whether it's a habit that we want or a habit that we don't want. So, for example, I'll give you some examples. Um, the cue for putting on your seatbelt in the car is most likely you closing the door. It kind of causes it. There's a cause and effect almost. Yeah. Now, please don't do this on a public highway, of course, but get in the car, leave your door open and drive forwards a little bit. It's probably very unlikely you actually bother putting your seatbelt on. One of those triggers. Maybe when as soon as you get into bed, that's when you start strolling on TikTok, and then three hours later, you are still going through TikTok. It's you know one causes the other, and one I've I had to put one up one of mine down. As soon as I get tea on, I start cooking. Um, generally, I will get the nibbles and end up starting on some crisps or some peanuts. So as soon as that oven goes on, I start getting a bit snacky while I'm while I'm prepping the veg. Just one of those habits. It's one of those things that comes up. So that's maybe one that I need to start looking at and, and changing. So whenever we're talking about the bit, next bits that are coming up, I want you to really think about if it's a habit you don't want, what's the cue? What's the bit that comes before that? And if... <laughs> feel personally attacked on the TikTok thing. Well, there you go. Um, you, you, you know it's you when I'm talking about you. Um, so if it's, a, if it's a habit you don't want, think about what is the cue? What's the bit that precedes that? Because that's one of the bits you want to change. Once you're in the habit, you're kind of almost in it. You've got those blinkers up. And then if it's a habit you want, so you're heading towards, what's what do you want that cue to be to kind of remind yourself to do it? Because once we've done it enough times, then it becomes a habit. There's various kind of bits of pop psychology research out there. You may hear people talking about whether, say, you know, do something 28 times, it becomes a habit. That can work so for some people and some things. It's a lot more than that. Beard recalls crisps. They are absolutely. We won't get into the debate on which crisps, though. We might be here for some time. So let's get to, into some of the um, specifics. So firstly is start small. So start with a small manageable habit and build from there. Um, there's a really kind of ni nice little graphic here about the importance of smaller steps. You know, if you decide suddenly you want to um, run a marathon, don't concentrate on 26.2 miles, concentrate on 100 yards first. Yeah, break it down into something small, get that hab habitual, and then work from that point. Um, obviously, the quick tip from that is to make sure that you're really paying attention to what that cue is to either get you out the door or to change whatever it is. 
I'll come back to cues again a little bit later as well. So first thing is start small. By all means, have a, have a big goal, you know, a big habit that you want to go for, um, but start those small steps first. The second one is about being specific. So can't see the visuals. Oh, it's unusual. Can you see the slides at all, Lee? I can only see the first slide. Oh, blimey. It, right, OK, yeah, let me. It hasn't changed at all. Right, let me do this in a different way then. Uh, uh, Is everyone else seeing it move? Change. Uh, this, yeah, there's it's some, changing some, for me. There's some nodding. OK, let me. Give me two shakes. Let me share this in a different way. Oh, there we are. Yeah. Yeah, Got see really. that? Grand. Yeah. Lovely. OK, uh, so where were we? So be specific. So we're talking about starting small. So it's also about being specific. Now, I'm not going to start banging on about smart goals here. Don't want to put anybody to sleep. But it is about being specific about what you want. So think about what you want and when you're going to do it. So I will exercise more. Very unlikely to happen. I'll go for a, I'll go for a thirty minute walk at six pm every day. More likely to happen. Okay, so it's being specific, so you know what you mean by it. Because what we do if we don't do that is we 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 are very good at finding the wiggle room. So if you want the habit, I will exercise more. I didn't exercise today. Oh, it's fine. I'll do it tomorrow. So you kind of give yourself that wiggle room out of it. Whereas actually, now I'm going to do it every day. That, that that reduces that wiggle room. We're very good at talking ourselves out of it. Third one is make it easy. Um, think about what stops you from doing it. So um, I've, uh, let me just scroll back up. Who was it that said about um, reading? Somebody said, Georgia, you said about reading. You know, if you want to read more, then Keep book or books by the by the side of the bed or on the coffee table or whatever it is likely that you would be reading. Actually, have some there rather than sitting somewhere where there aren't any books and thinking, OK, I want to read. Now, I've got, you, you know, you it's making it more difficult to do that. You know, if you want to get up in the mornings and go for a run, then get your gear ready first. Get it ready the night before, get it laid out so it makes it easy to put on or even sleep in your running gear, then you can just jump straight out of bed and go for it. I'm not saying at all that I've ever done that because that would be daft. Um, and also, if you are somebody who needs reminders, then use reminders. If you are somebody who likes a bit of a post-it or something up on the fridge to remind yourself to do something, then do it. My top tip around that, though, is if you are somebody who uses paper reminders or things up every week, so once a week as a minimum, Move that piece of paper to somewhere else. Because our brains are very good at ignoring what we get used to seeing. So physically move it and then it's oh, it's now over there again and your eye catches it. Whereas if it stays in the same place on that fridge door, you'll stop noticing that very soon. So if you're somebody who needs reminders, make sure you change them. Track your progress. So use some form of tracker. If you want to use a posh app, go for it. If it's a little grid on the again on the fridge door, then do that as well. And those logs can make a massive difference. Firstly, it's a reminder to do it. So you're looking at it, there's a gap there. I need to tick tick that box. It's also motivating to see your progress because you can see how far you've come from when you started to where you got your heading. And also in that moment when you can tick that box. You know, you get that little bit of excitement and that little that thrill of, of satisfaction. And there's loads of studies done out there. Uh, an interesting one, there's a study, some research done with like 1,600 people who basically were wanting to lose some weight th through diet. Um, and those that made, that kept a daily food log lost twice as much than those who didn't keep a log. Because again, if you're putting stuff down, you're reducing that wiggle room. Because you, you're having to kind of admit to yourself that, oh, I didn't do it or I didn't do it. The partner. 
So find an accountability partner, find somebody who will kind of hold you, help hold you accountable. That doesn't mean they have to chase you up, but it does mean that next time you have a chat with them, you know they may say, oh, how are you getting on with that bit of exercise you promised you were doing? Or, oh, um, George, how, how did you get on with that book you said you were going to read? Because then you've got to actually say, oh, I didn't do it. And, you know, some of us need a little bit of that external person to go, oh, you told me you were doing, you know, what, why are you not doing it? However, make sure that that person does want you to succeed. So no energy vampires or mood hoovers allowed. Nobody who's going to be there saying, ah, I knew you'd never do it. Don't want one of those. You want one, somebody who's going to get their pom poms out and cheer you on. OK. Reward yourself. Obviously, if you want to reward yourself every time you do something well, great. But at least every now and again, reward yourself. It doesn't have to be anything massive. It could be just a quick celebratory sit down for five minutes with a cup of tea. Whatever it would be, just, just make sure you have those potentially planned in, have those. A big one about habits and forming new habits, stopping habits you don't want is about being patient with yourself. We're very good at, oh, but I want it now. I want it to set. I, I want it in this position where I don't want to have to think about it. But remember, it takes time. And this may be difficult for some of you to hear. Perfection is not possible. OK, let, just, let, just let me repeat that. Perfection is not possible. OK, a lot of people fail to change habits because they fail and then that's it. They don't try again. So the problem isn't slipping up. The problem is that if you do slip up, then you're thinking that it's all over. It's that all or nothing, th nothing thinking. A good again, and not to use the word again, but almost another habit to have is the little point there is never missed twice. So if you slip up, if you're trying to, I don't know, get down from from two bottles of wine per per evening to one bottle of wine and you have two bottles of wine on that particular evening, fine, it was just a tough evening. Make sure you don't do that tomorrow. So if you slip up, fine, it's a slip up, crack on with it, get back onto the plan. And then the last one of these is, is to make sure that you reflect every now and again. You reflect why, why have you started? Why was it important to you in the first place? Yeah? Um, and if it's a bad habit, think about how long did it take you to get into that bad habit? It can take a similar amount of time to get to change that. Hopefully that hasn't depressed anybody in terms of that one, but it can take quite a while. Oh, a little quote I really like from Abraham Lincoln, that discipline is choosing between what you want now and what you want most. So you might want that extra packet of crisps now, but actually what do you want to, what do you want ahead? It's reminding yourself on that on that why you're doing it. Excuse me. So in terms of kind of a what now, because I want you to be thinking about it. Let me just put those back on so they're all there on screen. So for those that put down or for those that didn't, in terms of some of the habits that you want, out of those steps down there, which of those do you think actually that's that's one of the bits that I need to change? that will help me install this new habit? Is it that you haven't been specific or is it actually you're not rewarding yourself or you're being a bit impatient with it? You are allowed more than one, but chuck a few in. What are some of those that's gonna make the difference for you? See a few people typing. Just well, hopefully a few are putting down. In terms of the kind of content of this, it's on one of our bite size guides. So to get onto it, you can see there on screen, it's in the on the pulse sheet under GC University. Scroll down the bottom of the page and there's the creating new habits. And basically it's kind of the steps that I've been covering with a bit more information and more useful links. 
if you are a um, no pressure Georgia whatsoever, but if you are a book reader, um, one of the kind of best known one out there at the moment is Atomic Habits. If you haven't read it already, great book, um, great book on kind of forming new habits. And as it's saying there about breaking bad ones, which is fantastic. <coughs> what time are we on? 11.51. Um, one of the things that we're doing as part of uh, Learning at Work Week is, is asking people to do little uh, what's called flip video. So maximum 60 seconds. Um, you don't have to at all. But please do um, go on. It doesn't have to be what you've learnt on this. It's anything. And all we're asking for people to do is pop on. You can do it on your phone, uh, on the phone. You don't have to do it on the laptop. Um, literally 60 seconds, something you've recently learned and what difference it's made for you. And, and then what we're doing is, is Flip will then collate those together as kind of a whole um, whole bit. So the, the link's there. And I think I've saved it. Let me put it in. Yeah, I'll put it in the chat as well. So by all means, do that. What we're on, Lem 52. I want you to, as ever with me, there's always an and finally, an and finally to think about. And finally is keep it positive and remember the pink penguin. Now, what do I mean by that? The human mind cannot comprehend the negative. OK, so bear me with me with this one. I'm going to I'm going to concentrate. Bear with me. It's impossible for the human brain to not think about something it's told not to think about without thinking about it first. So you, you, you understood all that. So as you are sat there, do not think about Pink Penguin. Now you're thinking about it. And yet a lot of us, when we want to change particularly a bad habit is, OK, this is what I don't want. I don't want this. I don't want this. I don't want this. Well, by thinking what you don't want, that's all you're thinking about. So you're just going to keep repeating it. So the main thing is keep your positive focus on what you want rather than what you don't want. OK, so if you don't want that habit, that's great. What habit do you want instead? That's the bit that you want to concentrate on. So well done. We are there, a whistle stop tour on creating new habits. So, of course, I will expect some feedback by email or teams by the end of today of all these new habits that have now been created, because obviously it happens that quickly. So let me just stop that. So we do have a few extra minutes. So let me stop that so I can see people. Um, any questions? You can put them in the chat if you want. If you're feeling brave, you can shout out. Any questions about new habits? I'll wait to be lighter and not wobble like a penguin. Well, there you go, Lenka. Thank you. Pink penguin. Will this be recorded? To others? Yes, it is being recorded. Jez, absolutely. It'll be top and tailed and put into the uh, put onto our YouTube so you can get onto it. Heather's still thinking about a pink penguin. <laughs> it's installed now, that's it. But there you go. Whenever you think about this, this little workshop, you'll remember the pink penguin. Always rem rem remember it. Yep, don't forget the flip videos. Absolutely, yes. So thank you, everybody. If you do have any further questions, by all means, drop me a line afterwards. More than happy to um, answer any. Uh, like a graceful swan rather than the wobbly penguin. Well, yeah, there you go. Um, so go forth and create new habits and really good to see you all.